Hello, I'm Jason Hatton. I'm uh, responsible for coordination of biology and exobiology in the science space team of the Human Space Flight and Robotic Exploration Program. So I'd like to give you uh, a little bit of an overview of uh, the research that we do using uh, ISS. So the International Space Station, as its name suggests, is international and basically it allows you to, to do very long duration experiments uh, in, in the spaceflight environment. Uh, uh, so looking at the effect of, of, of microgravity, low gravity, also exposure to uh, uh, the direct space environment. Um, so it, you can do research in all fields. You can study, of course, the astronauts, how they react to the space environment. So uh, studying their changes in their physiology, you can study biology. So the cells, uh, which would be uh, cells from, say, uh, human body, uh, microbes, uh, plants. Uh, you can study also physical sciences, material science, fluid physics. And also, of course, you can look outside from the space station. You can look at uh, the Earth, so you can do Earth observation, you can do also uh, observation of the space environment. The nice thing is because it's an international platform, all of the facilities, all of the instrumentation is shared. So uh, uh, that allows you then to, 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 to do a lot of research and in, in, in very internationally. So there's been about 3,000 uh, uh, um, experiments done over the lifetime of ISS. And those are gave about uh, 2,000 uh, scientific publications. One of the areas, of course, of interest is astrobiology. You know, do microorganisms or microscopic uh, animals in dormant state, can they survive exposure to, to, to the space environment? This is very important to see whether uh, life could be transported from one planet to another on asteroid, or whether also if you have, for instance, uh, uh, microbes on a spacecraft going from the Earth to Mars, you know, how do you prevent contamination? The other aspect is also how did life originate? Um, so there's a lot of uh, studies on the chemistry which led to life, so which may have been going on in, on the primitive Earth or in uh, on the surface of a comet. So we developed a, a, an instrument uh, called EXPOSE, and this was put on the outside of ISS and allowed exposure to direct space environment for typically 18 months, two years. And what was found was in fact that, that it, uh, many of the uh, microbes and even uh, uh, simple animals such as uh, tardigrades, these are water bears, could actually survive direct exposure to the space environment uh, for, for 18 months or so. And uh, so, so that, was, that was a very interesting finding. The other area, of course, is plant biology. Um, and there was actually um, a whole series of experiments done over a 10-year period by uh, a team of, of European and US scientists. And they looked at all sorts of aspects of plant biology. They looked at how plants responded to, to, to gravity, because what you can do on board of the ISS is you can effectively look at what happens in the absence of gravity. You can apply using a centrifuge artificial gravity and then see what is the perception threshold for, 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 for plants to, to gravity. And that was actually found to be, you know, uh, hundreds of, of normal Earth's gravity. So, so plants are very sensitive. One of the experiments which was particularly nice um, was uh, uh, an experiment which studied a process called um, circumutation. So when a plant grows, if you look very carefully, it doesn't just go straight up, it does a sort of circular motion. And with this circular motion, um, it, it, this was actually observed by Charles Darwin. What he, although he observed this, he, well, he, he couldn't figure out what the mechanism was. You always have gravity on the Earth. But going to the space station, it was possible to do an experiment where we could take away gravity, we could apply gravity, we could turn the light on and off uh, and answer this question. In fact, what it was found was it is internally driven, but it's very strongly uh, affected in terms of the period and the intensity by gravity and by light. So that was a very nice result answering a question that Charles Darwin had posed over a hundred years earlier. A lot of the research which is done on board of ISS is basic uh, research, but it, it has relevance to a number of applications. Material science, for instance, you can do much more precise measurements. Uh, also research uh, uh, which is relevant to health, you know, uh, right while I'm standing here, my body is working against gravity. And of course in spaceflight, in, 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 in microgravity conditions, you, you don't have that. So 
what happens is unless you do exercise or some kind of countermeasures, uh, so that could also be with, with diet, um, you, you will lose a lot of your bone and muscle mass. And this actually parallels some of the changes which occur when people are very inactive. So, you know, sitting at the desk or in the elderly also have, have trouble with mobility. So you can look at, say, the transfer between, you know, the techniques you use to, to uh, as what we call countermeasures against uh, uh, bone and muscle uh, um, loss for astronauts and what you would do for, 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 for people uh, on, on the Earth who also have problems with bone and muscle loss. You can also do uh, uh, research with things such as uh, nematode worms. So these small microscopic worms, um, they also have muscles and they lose muscle uh, muscle mass uh, in space fights. So, and it turns out that the genes which control the, the, the muscle uh, proteins and, and the muscle growth are actually very similar to the genes which, which uh, humans have. So you can actually study, uh, you can manipulate that process and that gives you some clues into the mechanism. So there's a whole series of experiments which have been done on that. The final thing is, of course, if you're going to Mars, um, you either take a lot of tin food with you or you grow your own food during the, the, the mission to Mars and also perhaps to regenerate your atmosphere, converting CO2 back into uh, oxygen. So you, there's a, a project we, we have called uh, Melissa, which uh, is a bioregenerative life support system. So it has plants in there, it has algae in a bioreactor, it also has a waste-based treatment system. So the, all of the technology which goes into that also has applications on the Earth. If you want to do agriculture in a very intensive uh, environment, so in, in a greenhouse, you want to do that very reliably. So, so that, that's also an area where there's transfers. So there's many, many different transfers uh, of, of knowledge which, which are possible.